Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the Storm Collectibles King of Fighters 98 Ultimate Match Terry Bogard, uh, aka the best character in Smash Brothers, and I guess he was in some other games before that. I don't know, something like that. And so here he is, Terry Bogard, one of the most popular f characters to get almost no figures in the history of collecting. There's like one other figure of him, which I will be reviewing soon, by the way. For all of you Smash people, you need that one for your collections. Uh, anyway, this is the one from Storm. So many people have been so excited about this for so long, and I'm very happy to be reviewing it for you. I'm here to tell you right off the bat, you should watch the rest of the review for the information. No, it's got some really awesome stuff in this box. It's a huge package. As you can see, that's my hand. I can palm a basketball. That is a big package. And that's also what she said. So let's go ahead and get him off the stand and take a closer look. This guy stands just about 19 centimeters to the top of his head, which makes him pretty close to seven and a half inches, which is super tall. And we'll do some height comparisons in a minute. It's definitely not one six scale. And the reason I have the box here is I've heard some people say he looks like he has a very skinny torso relative to the size of his arms. That is always the case for Terry. Look at that skinniness. His bicep is about the same width as his waist. It's always been drawn that way. That's just the way the character is. And if it didn't have those proportions, it would probably look weird. And when I did my unboxing the other day, I said he looked like he had kind of weird proportions. I don't think he does. I think the thing that threw me off is just how tubular his legs are. Like it looks like he's wearing straight leg jeans, which he probably is, but that there's nothing inside them other than maybe like some packing material because he looks like he's got sausage legs. There's no leg shape to them, just for a quick comparison. I guess we can do height compare, or not height, yeah, height. Uh, Rugal has a little bit of sculpt, a little bit of leg meat inside of his pants, whereas Terry doesn't, which I think is okay. It's not a terrible deal because he's always been fairly slender, but I think that's all it was, is the tubularness. So we're gonna do some quick height comparisons. There's Rugal, and here is Kyo. I think that's his name, right? There's Kyo, and oh no, I can't reach it. There he is, hang on. Oh. Look, like I was very far behind me and I couldn't turn around any farther. And there we have Iori. And so size-wise, that's what all of the uh, King of Fighters guys look like. You're probably wondering why there's a gap on the right. Well, I thought we could also do a quick size comparison against the modern Ryu, which is the bigger one. He still seems grossly small compared to this line, which seems like it's extra tall. Slightly different styling, of course. But even then, I thought it would also be good to compare those guys to the first release of Ryu, who is very small relative to the rest of them. So scaling is definitely all over the place. I don't know if it's far enough off to say you couldn't put them on the same shelf. Maybe you could. I, that's what I do, and I don't think it looks too bad, but it is worth noting that the scaling is definitely, definitely all over the place with these guys. Let me get the rest of these guys out of the way. And then we'll get into the review, almost four minutes in, and we haven't said much of anything. Wonderful. No, I think uh, I think a little candid conversation about some of these things is okay. Anyway, on to the aesthetics. His jeans have a little bit of a dry brush effect throughout to give him kind of that denim look. There's really no painting anywhere else other than the zipper on his jacket, very faint silver line there. Jacket is just solid red, shirt is solid white. I mean, there's painted laces on his shoes and the red is painted. I guess it's just the red. Anyway, you can get my point. There's like no paint here. I personally don't mind it, though I, obviously more paint is always better. I think the accessories make up for it though, so that'll be okay. They did do a good job with the hat logo. The Fatal Fury focus. That looks really good. I do think the hat sits too low on his head. Definitely looks weird but not terrible, and don't worry, we're gonna get to the ponytail situation in a bit. But overall, I think the aesthetic is definitely good enough. I'm pretty pleased with it, so I will give his aesthetic an eight out of 10. I think that's fine. The jacket does look a little bit plasticky compared to the rest of the figure. Now, as far as accessories go, this is gonna take a minute. We'll start with the easy stuff. He does have an alternate jacket, which is kind of like windswept. You can see how there's a bit of a difference there. We're gonna do this for the first time live at the time of recording, which is not live while you're watching it on camera for the first time. So what you have to do, oh God, brings back so many bad memories. You pull his arms off, including the white part. Oh God. Oh. Take that off 
So far we're good. I guess you could technically leave his... I guess if you wanted just his t-shirt you could do that. Have we been out of focus this whole time? I sure hope not. All right, put the jacket on, pretend we were in focus the whole time, and then snap everything back in and hope nothing breaks. So you'll notice these guys have a little bit of extra meat at the top. There's an arrow. Hopefully you can see that. There's an arrow telling you where the top is. That way you get the extra meat at the top. Like a good burger. And then you just snap it all back in and hope nothing breaks. It looks like they accounted for it better than they did with them. Bison when we had that first snafu. And get everything resituated. I don't have it all resituated properly, but you get the idea. Okay, didn't break, that's good. It does look a little weird. This jacket seems very narrow at the top. Maybe to accommodate for the, I guess when you bring his arms out, it looks okay. But it kind of pinches in around his chesticles and it looks odd. But I guess once it's posed, it'll be fine. So that's okay. All right, more accessories. There's a lot of accessories. We have two fist hands to come on them in the package and then a buttload of other style pose hands. As for the ponytails, we have four. There are, however, only two different styles. We have two of each. Why they did it that way, I don't know. Two things, first of all, neither of the styles peg in properly. They don't go in all the way. They appear to be somewhat keyed, but none of the orientations make it fit, as far as I can tell, and they just don't wanna go in all the way. So that sucks. They just don't wanna peg in. And then the second thing is, one of them kind of hangs down a little bit. I guess that's okay, but none of them go out to the side. Like, So that one hangs down, but kinda not. And then the other one, is this the other one? Yeah, so it just kind of goes straight back. So, I mean, obviously it's usable, but if you're gonna give us four ponytails, just give us four ponytails. Make one go off to the side, make one hang straight down. It seems reasonable to do that, rather than giving us two of each kind, which is really weird. Why'd they do that? All right, onto the heads. We have one neutral head that comes on the package, then we have the one smiling head, then we have one with his teeth showing, and then we have one which is yelling, and that one's my favorite of the bunch. They're all very nicely done though. And now it's time for the good stuff. Now, I tend to make up my own names for the moves in, in Smash Brothers, so I don't know the names of these moves, but this is the one where he throws the fire on the ground and it travels across the ground, and it's very nicely done. You can see scale-wise, it's got some decent size to it, decent paint. Then we have this one where he just punches forward, and it's also nicely scaled. Decent paint job, decent sculpt. And then we have this one, which is my favorite accessory of all time. Power geyser or something like that. Look how big it is, it's so big. Look how girthy and big it is. That's a great accessory. That is gonna look so cool on a shelf. I do wish it was a little bit more saturated. You can see it's a little bit fair. Uh, not the most color there, but it's still super duper. That is awesome, I love it. I love it a lot. And that's it for Terry's accessories. But we do also get one for Mr. Rugal, which hopefully I can pull out the packages for the rest of these guys by the time I get done with these reviews and do a picture of all of these put together. But you can see Rugal's ball of doom is big. Okay, accessory wise, 10 out of 10. Awesome accessories, super duper, hair sucks, but the rest makes up for it. All right, on to the articulation. The head can move around, like the neck is extra flexible on this guy. I don't know if they did that intentionally, but it is awesome. The neck is extra flexible. Ball peg down here, ball peg at the top. You can move the head around. Not a ton, most of that happens at the bottom, but still plenty of range. Shoulders, you already saw, have a ball peg to connect them to the body. And then you have your ball hinge, which has loads of range, no issues there. Full rotation all the way around. Bicep swivel, double jointed elbow, really good range. You have a ball peg that holds the hand on. I guess it's a straight peg, technically, doesn't matter. To the ball hinge, which is in there, no issues there. Diaphragm joint has a double ball peg that lets him lean back. Not the most range there, that is unfortunate. A little bit gappy, definitely could be better. Leans forward a little bit. Side to side is okay, rotation is okay. You have another ball peg at the lower torso which gives you a whole lot more range and is more useful than the top one. But between the two, you should be able to pose him just fine. For the hips, basically full on splits. That is really good. Bring the leg forward, better than horizontal, that is really good. 
bringing the leg back. Yeah, you can, you're gonna have to mess around with this diaper a little bit, but you can bring the leg all the way back if you wanted to. Uh, thigh swivel is there, double jointed knee. I heard he was pretty limited, but I think that's enough. That's better than 90, that'll be okay. More is always better, but practically speaking, I think that's fine. And then for the ankles, we have pretty crappy ankles. They don't really go back too much at all. They don't really go forward too much at all. You get a little bit of an ankle rocker. Technically, you get a rotation in there, so it functions like a ball hinge, but because of the pants, you don't really get much of anything. And then you get a really nice toe hinge. <laughs> so, not perfect, but definitely enough articulation. You should be able to get him posed up well enough and have a good time with it. So I'll give it an eight out of 10 overall. It works nicely. Just a few hangups here and there. So final verdict on this guy. It's not a perfect figure. It's not the best figure they've released because they have things like Sagat out there, which is just absurdly good. But this one is definitely up there as one of the best. I'm gonna give it an overall rating of nine out of 10. I know it sounds like the hair thing is a big deal, but it's on the back of his head, and as long as you can peg it in at least a little bit, it's not gonna totally destroy your fun with the figure. The few issues like the ankles being limited, things like that, not deal breaking, but that's why he's not a 10. He still gets a nine. Really, really strong release. Tons of fun. The accessories, goodness gracious. So good, so good. All right, there it is, guys. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think about the figure in the comment section below. If you liked the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, you're probably wrong. And if you haven't subscribed, you probably should because I have new videos up just about every single day and thousands already on the channel for you to check out when I don't upload. So make sure you come back for all of that. And in the meantime, keep collecting.